Hey everyone, it's been crazy here in week three on learning how to trade. I've been working with the different tools and platforms and trying to get more familiar with it. And also some interesting things uh, had happened. So I wanted to share that with you as well. First off, I just wanted to give a quick intro to tell you what I will be talking about in this video so you know what to expect. So I will be talking about the different trades that I've made, including the ones on my practice platform, as well as my real platform. And I'll show you some of the screenshots accordingly. Next, I'm going to be talking about a basic strategy that I've learned from a book that I've read. It's called the VWAP strategy. And then I'll share with you uh, my learning log and then this guide that I kind of wrote for my friend as well. So I have both linked in the description if you want to take a look at that. And then uh, just some of the resources that I've been using, um, including this book that I've been reading called How to Day Trade for a Living by Andrew Assis. I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then just my plans for next week and some of the things that I've set up for this channel um, this past week. So let's get right into it. We're going to head up with trades and screenshots first. Let's take a look at the stocks in the different screenshots. You can see we started on Monday the 13th. This is where I contacted tech support to get live quotes. And these are the different links that I've used. This document will be linked in the description below in case you want to follow what I did or just checked out the videos that I've watched. So we have Tuesday and Wednesday, which we're basically just getting familiar with the platform itself, observing how the different stocks move and then just watching and playing around with different things, but not necessarily anything strategic or worth mentioning. It wasn't until Thursday, which I actually made some real trades. I made practice trades on Thinkorswim platform and I made real trades on Webull. So I'm not gonna go too much into the Webull part. Um, I'll talk about that later, but I'd like to go over this annotation that I have so you know what I'm doing. This is the stock name, which is AIM. This is the price that I entered at. It's $3.01 and I've got 100 shares of it. I basically risked 10 cents per share, right? So use minus 10 to get 290. I expected to get twice that much, twice my risk, 320. This is a two to one ratio. More professional traders will have better uh, ratios. They'll play something like three, four, or five to one ratio. And that's how they make a lot more profit. If this were a real account, right, I would really wouldn't want to play three, four or five. I just want to test the waters. So that's kind of what I'm simulating here. I'm playing small, just getting used to the platform, making sure I execute trades correctly, that sort of thing. So I did a two to one ratio. And so this is what actually happened. I sold my 100 shares that I had bought out for $3.03. It wasn't exactly profitable because I expected $3.20, but I didn't lose much. I broke even. And that's the kind of notation I've been using. I'm only going to go over one of these cases. You guys are welcome to go back, look at the different screenshots. Just pause it at any time. I'm going to just breeze through them. But I will be talking in depth about Boxo. So Boxo got in at $3.57 and I risked about $0.15 cents or so. I expect to make about 30 cents and I actually did a good trade on this I got out at around 425 which is what I wanted this is 716 so if we take a look real quick this is the think or swim platform this is the general overview and they call it the monitor tab and we have July 16th up here and specifically at Boxel I made 69 bucks on it which wasn't bad for 100 shares and the whole day I made 106 dollars so that accounts for all the losses and different winnings that I've got Boxel bought around 846 a.m. bought 100 shares exited around 9 o'clock and sold 100 shares remember 357 and 426 so that's the general overview for Think or swim. This is the AIM stock. So pause it right here if you'd like to take a look. Next up, this is Boxel, the one that we'll be looking at more closely. This is Neo. Pause here if you want to take a look. And this is VBIB. This is your last chance to pause. Let's head over to Boxel. We're going to take a look at what we did here. So around 8.45, I entered. I noticed there was a little dip. So I entered around there somewhere and I got in around 357. I put a stop loss around 345. If the price starts going anywhere below this, my stock will automatically sell and that's called a stop order. And then I expect to make twice the risk. So 30 more cents. So I expected about 425, somewhere around, let's say here. So as soon as the stock hit that price, I put in a limit order and the limit order just basically says the, the stock won't sell unless it's $4.25 better. 
So anything above this line. As you can see, it went up to 465. So I could have made more money if I wanted to. But again, we're just practicing. I was just making sure I can execute a two to one order. I am confident that I can do a three to one, four to one, and five to one the next time. So the, this is gonna be the trades and screenshot section. So next up, we have the VWAP. So VWAP is called Volume Weighted Average Price. And there's a lot of math behind it and everything, but you can look that up on Investopedia. Basically, VWAP is where the institutional traders are trading. They wanna buy below the market or the average, and they wanna sell above the average so they can make some profit. But the problem with institutional traders is that they have a lot of volume. They have a lot of clients that they have to buy stock for. So they have to enter into the market slowly because they can't just buy a whole whopping box of, of stock. So they have to enter slowly. And that's why you're getting all these deviations, like little boxes, big boxes, that sort of thing. With the VWAP, it's an intraday strategy. You don't want to use it for a swing trade. You look for like a little dip and you want to make sure that it's going to climb a little bit back up. So I kind of saw that there was a lot of good information about this stock. So I was deciding to enter in here. And of course, I have my stop and limit order to protect my Myself. and it's above the VWAP which is basically there's a lot of people buying it they're staying above the the average you kind of want to just hang around up in this section here once it starts climbing you want to enter somewhere and then sell somewhere that's where you make your profit uh, buying long if you're doing a short you want to stay below the VWAP so you want to short the sell and so that's the basic of the VWAP strategy I'll also link different videos that I've watched in order to learn this strategy I'm gonna be practicing this for a while I'm gonna give it a couple weeks or a month just to get more familiar with it but that's the quick and dirty version so that's the vwap section let's head over to the logs and the guide Let's talk about the log and the guide that I've been working with. Basically, I picked up uh, a general kind of way to just keep log from now on. As you can see, Friday is a little bit different. I wised up a little bit. I basically have a state entry where I talk about how I feel that day because in the book that I was reading, it mentioned that you should track what you've kind of eaten, how you slept, exercise, that sort of thing to know what works for you. That's the whole point of this journal. And then I have a Weeble entry because because this is actually the real account that I was trading with. I did buy 200 shares, $3.80. It's supposed to climb really high and we're gonna do a swing trade actually, something that I don't have experience with, but I am riding this along with my friend who recommended this to me. And I have a thinkorswim section, right? As you can see, I don't really have the strategies here anymore. Why's that? I'll show you why in a second here. And then the last thing was just learning. What did I learn that day? What did I learn to do? What did I watch or what did I pick up? So that's kind of how I'm keeping log and I'd like to recommend this structure for you too, if you'd like to use it. Now I'm gonna share with you where I've been keeping the strategy for the thinkorswim platform. There's a widget that you can use called Scratchpad that I've enabled. And it's just kind of where I wrote out the same no annotation that I did that I showed you uh, in the previous section. And so instead of having to glance back and forth through different documentation, everything should be mostly on the same screen if you can afford it. It takes a lot of mental stress out of your, your life. And then the last thing I want to show you in this section was something that I've really been proud of working on. My friend hasn't started yet i told him to hop on just practice for free man for like a couple months six months or more once you really do have the money throw that down and make some good cash because now you got the skills so i kind of made this for him and also myself because i'll go back through i'll read it and i'll change my game plan according to new resources and new things that i've learned i'm going to link this in the description please feel free to look at it it's free i'm not making you do any email sign up lists or any subscription thing this is purely from the love of my heart to share to you guys and to benefit myself and just some talking points if you want to chat with me on discord or on the youtube comments so in this guide i kind of have just a quick introduction different links about me and then a quick start what i would actually do if i were to get started three weeks ago this is exactly what i would do i would go to the quick start this is kind of just like a general guide you know, just want to read through it and then the next section i have tools recommendations so these are the tools that i i've used um i haven't used them all 
exactly, but I'm exploring them as we go. And then lastly, I have media recommendations. So Investopedia is a reference. This is the book that I've been reading, highly recommended. I'm actually reading it for the second time in order to take down more notes and to apply what I've already picked up this past week. Uh, it's almost like a Bible to me, I guess, but <laughs> I'm going to have more Bibles. So don't worry about that. So the last one is just day trading. Just kind of a quick introduction from Investopedia. Awesome to read. Just kind of get a, the general how the stock market is set up so that's gonna be my guide that I'm I have written up for you guys it's gonna be in the description and also in the trading channel of my discord the guide will probably be updated by the time you watch this because I have some new things that I want to add to it this is all for you and take advantage of it in the next section I'm gonna share with you about the book that I've read and then uh, my plans for the next coming week there's also a second part to this video if you check the description on the bottom, you'll see the link down there. I go into a book that I'm currently using as a guide to start my day trading career. I also share with you a spreadsheet calculator that I'm currently working on, as well as some of the other tools that I'm using. So feel free to check it out and thanks for visiting.